Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving for a complex number and its argument. So we have z equals 1 minus e to the power negative i theta and argument of z is equal to pi over 8. Actually when I said argument I meant we're going to be solving for theta because argument of z is given. So Let's see how we can do this. Uh, we'll talk about some interesting stuff, uh, some trigonometry, a little bit of geometry, so on and so forth. So let's start by turning this polar form into standard form. What does e to the power i theta mean? So we have something called Euler's formula, which is actually awesome. So when you have something like e to the power i theta, this can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. And of course, if you just multiply both sides by r, you get the form of a complex number uh, with its modulus, which is the absolute value, right? Remember, z, any complex number, can be written as r times e to the power i theta. Of course, we're not talking about this particular z, but in general, let's go ahead and write it like this, r times e to the power i theta. r is the modulus, or also known as the absolute value of the number, and then theta is called the argument, okay? So, how do we go from here? We are given z as 1 minus e to the power negative i theta. We do have something for e to the power i theta. How do we go to e to the power negative i theta from here? And the answer is actually simple. Just replace theta with negative theta. Since you can't replace i with negative i, we have to do theta. i is a constant here, by the way. Uh, let's talk about that briefly and theta is the variable. So replace theta with negative theta, we get e to the power negative i theta equals cosine of negative theta plus i sine negative theta. And notice that cosine is an even function, so it's just going to absorb the negative and turn or output cosine theta, but sine is odd, right? It's an odd function, therefore sine of negative theta is just going to be negative sine of theta. So our e to the power negative i theta is going to turn into this expression in standard form. I'm going to use the standard form because it's kind of easier to work with. Uh, in this case, I could be wrong. Please correct me in the comment section down below if that's not the case. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace e to the power negative i theta with cosine theta minus i sine theta. Remember, this is the conjugate of cosine theta plus i sine theta. And when you multiply two conjugates, you always get a real number. Right? So let's go ahead and expand it. 1 minus cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now, if we didn't have the 1 there, it would be nice, right? We could probably come up with some angle. But here's the problem. We are given argument of z, but we're going to need to find theta. So how do we get rid of this 1 or how do we work with something like this? Well, the half angles are going to come to the rescue. Or should I say double angle? I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to combine the 1 minus cosine theta into a single thing. And in this case, the appropriate formula would be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. This is kind of like the double angle formula, but with the theta and theta over 2, it's it's kind of like same idea. I mean, it's double anyways. So hopefully that makes sense. And now for the sine theta, I can use the same thing, like treat theta as like 2x, and then sine of 2x, remember, is 2 sine x cosine x, and then replace x with theta over 2. So you're, this is what you're going to get. Sine theta can be written as 2 times sine theta over 2 times cosine theta over 2. This is the trick to simplify, or at least one of the tricks for simplifying this expression. And when I expand it, 1 minus 1 is going to be 0, and z is going to be 2 sine squared theta over 2 plus 2i sine theta over 2 times cosine theta over 2. Now, we kind of got z, but it looks complicated, doesn't it? It still looks complicated. But here's one thing you can do. You can factor out a common factor, and the common factor actually happens to be 2 sine theta over 2. So 
This is a common factor and this is a common factor. So let's go ahead and take that out. 2 sine theta over 2. By the way, I hope you don't mind. I'm not putting the theta over 2 in parentheses because it's understood. That's the argument of the uh, sine function. So when you take this out, in, inside you're going to find sine theta over 2 because sine squared is needed plus i times cosine of theta over 2. And you're like, uh-oh, this is reversed. What is going on here? Here's what we're going to do. Because it, normally it's supposed to be cosine of an angle plus i times sine of the same angle, but they're switched. But don't worry, we have this co-relationship. What is that called? Co-angle identity or something like that. I can't remember the official name for it, but this is what I mean. If you subtract an angle from 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, the sine and cosine switch around. And it doesn't matter whether, whether the angle is acute or not acute. So here's what we're going to do then. Uh, we don't need to touch sine theta over 2 or 2 sine theta over 2 because this is the modulus. Notice that this is r by the way. And inside we're going to do the following. Replace sine theta over 2 with cosine of pi over 2 minus theta over 2 because that's what switches the sine from uh, cosine to sine and cosine to sine plus i times, and we're going to replace cosine theta over 2 with sine of pi over 2 minus theta over 2. Of course, you could write this differently, right? Great. Why is this great? Because I, I can get the argument of z from here. What is the argument? This is the argument. Great. And I do know what argument of z is actually, right? It's given. Look at the system. We're given argument of z and we're given z equals something. Okay. Now let's go ahead and use this information. Argument of z, the angle that it makes. So it's kind of like this, right? It's at pi over 8. So this is pi over 4, kind of half of that. So our z is going to be along this line. Make sense? This is pi over 8 radians. This is real. This is imaginary, so on and so forth. Now, argument of z from here is pi over 2 minus theta over 2, and it's given as pi over 8. Awesome. We can solve this equation, right? This is linear, fairly simple. Just take the theta over 2 on the right-hand side and put the pi over 8 on the left, subtract from 4 pi over 8, which is going to give you 3 pi over 8, and then multiply both sides by 2, and you're going to get theta equals 3 pi over 4. Awesome. We got theta. What else do we need to find? Let's go ahead and write down z in standard form. What is z though, right? z is 1 minus e to the power negative i theta or, remember how we wrote it, 1 minus cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Before we apply the double angle identities, let's go ahead and leave it at that because you know what? Theta is a Theta is better than theta over 2 because theta over 2 is kind of like semi-special, but theta is special. Okay? Let's go ahead and use this. So now from here, z is going to be 1 minus cosine theta. So what is cosine of 3 pi over 4? Let's go ahead and use our unit circle. And pi over 4 is here. This is 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, so on and so forth. So that's my angle, the same diagonal, but kind of like a reflection. Its cosine is going to be negative root 2 over 2, and its sine is going to be positive root 2 over 2. Make sense? So this is going to be root 2 over 2 plus i times root 2 over 2. Of course, sine theta is positive. And if you make a common denominator, this is going to be 2 minus root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i, if you want to write it as a plus bi. Okay? Now, one thing you can do is kind of check something here. We said that, well, or, or it was given that argument of z is pi over 8. We can quickly check that. How do you find tangent from uh, a plus bi? If e, z is given as a plus bi, remember tangent of argument of z is given as b over a or y over x, right? So here, if you divide tangent pi over 8 is supposed to be root 2 over 2 divided by 2 minus root 2 over 2. And let's go ahead and check that out. And from here, it should give us root 2 over 2 minus root 2. But use the conjugate, and you'll get this. This is going to give you a 2. And the numerator distribute 2 root 2 plus 2 over 2. That's going to be 2 root 2 plus 1. Now, is it true that tangent pi over 8 is equal to root 2 plus 1? You can use the double angle formula, or 
draw a right triangle. Let's take this as pi over 4. So 1, 1, root 2. Now extend this is a really cool trick. As long as the hypotenuse, so this is going to be root 2 again. And from exterior angle theorem, so many beautiful things are going to happen. This is going to be pi over 8 and pi over 8. So tangent pi over 8 is going to be 1 over root 2 plus 1. And that should give you basically the same answer, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.